So today we're going to be soft modding the Nintendo DSi XL. This will allow us to play backup games and ROMs and other apps on our Nintendo DS. We're going to do this by installing the Haya custom firmware and the Twilight menu to our SD card which will be launched on our Nintendo DS. So we're going to start off with downloading all the files that we need and then mounting our SD card onto our computer. We're going to then format, format our SD card to FAT32 with a 32 kilobyte cluster size if it, available. It doesn't matter what you name your SD card. So once that complete, we're then going to go to the unlaunched zip file and extract the unlaunched DSi file to our SD card. Rename it to unlaunch.nds and go back to the files that we downloaded and drag and drop dump tools nds to our SD card. We're then going to go to the HB menu and extract the boot nds file to our SD card. We're then going to make a folder called private and inside that folder another folder called DS and then inside that folder another folder called apps and inside that folder a folder called 484E494A doesn't have to be in capital letters I did it just for aesthetics. You're going to drag and drop the PIT file into the numbered folder. Once you're done that, you're pretty much done. So we're going to jump to our DS, and I had a little bit of trouble, but just mount your SD card onto your DS. Careful not to break the cover. Again, I had some problems for whatever reason. We're then going to power on the DS. Touch the health and safety screen. So we'll go to settings just to show you what version the firmware is currently on which is 1.4, which is good. This exploit should work for any DS anyways. Just make sure you download the correct PIT file for the firmware that your Wii is on. Then we're going to navigate to the camera app and make sure it's toggled onto the SD card. Then we're going to tap album and this should launch the exploit. So first things we're going to do is make a copy of our internal memory called NAN. We're going to start A to begin. Now I've sped this up so it should take probably about 7 to 8 minutes to complete. And there we go. You should probably copy this to a safe place on your computer in case you do break your device down the road. Once we do that, we're going to navigate down to the unlaunch and we're going to want to do a new install. there we go. So now we have a pretty good brick preventative measure on our Nintendo DS and this is permanently installed with or without the SD card. You can use this to launch homebrew apps on its own but in the next step I'll show you how to install the Haya custom firmware which will use the dump of our NAND as our new custom firmware. So we're going to 
power off the Wii and bring our SD card back to our computer. And we're going to install the Haya by extracting the Haya helper. Navigate to the application file and run as administrator. We're then going to navigate to our NAND dump that we just did on our SD card. It's named NAND. Make sure that you click install the Twilight menu. And you want to navigate to the root of your SD card, meaning just click the drive of your SD card. If you don't do that, this won't work. Again, this will take a few minutes to complete. I've sped this up to about 12 times speed. So. so now we're going to just show you how quickly to drag and drop a few ROMs and backup games just to show you that it works. I don't have any DS games personally myself because I bought this. DS at a thrift store. So, for testing purposes, I downloaded an archive of DS, deleted all the games afterwards, and I sold the DS afterwards. So, with the Haya custom firmware, the one caveat to using it is that whatever size your SD card is, you have to only have two gigabytes or less free space available. So I've included a dummy script file that all you have to do is copy and paste into the a command prompt and it'll create a one gigabyte file that you can transfer onto your SD card that'll just take up space. Do this only if you have more than two gigabytes of free space. Otherwise, you don't need to have a dummy file. See, I have 1.25, so now the high up will work. Otherwise, you will have to boot the Twilight menu from the Homebrew menu or a launch. So again, this was only for testing purposes. I figured I'd tr at least try out a popular game and one of the newer one on the larger size, which happened to be Pokemon. So again, I've obviously sped this up to about 10 to 12 times. So this takes about 2 to 10 minutes depending on the size of the game. In the next video I'll be showing you a more extensive way to set up your ROM system on your Nintendo DS. So we're going to jump back to the DS and throw our SD card in. This time I didn't have that much of an issue. We're going to boot it on. It should turn on to the unlaunch menu. We're going to go to the options screen and then where it says no button, you're going to want to have it chosen as high ya. So press A and then navigate down to the high ya and select that and then restart the DS. And it should boot straight to the Haya. And it did. So on this screen, you're only going to see it once. So we're going to want to select the auto boot title. And you may or may not want to select the splash screen. So now it's going to boot to our SD card and to the dump file that we did earlier and there we go 
no health and safety screen. And there's the Twilight menu boot up screen. So I find this is a nice menu to launch your homebrew and your backup games from. So I'll give you a quick overview. We transferred some files earlier. And then navigate to the ROMs folder. transfer any Game Boy games, but it would show up here if we did. We did transfer Super Nintendo games, so let's check out that. And we see them there. Now, what I did notice down the road was that it does seem to glitch out if you have a large amount of files inside a directory. So I'd recommend keeping your ROM collection on the skeleton side on your DS. Keep it to just your favorites. DSiWare also works fairly easily. We've just seen our Spurn Gym boot up. I'm gonna try to boot up the Nintendo DS file. Now I thought it didn't work because I've sped this up obviously. It took up to a minute and 30 seconds of the loop to launch the Pokemon game. I was about to turn off the DS actually. So I hope you like this and stay tuned for the next video and I'll go over how to make it into a ROM emulation machine. Like and subscribe.